everyone, Christina Werner here. Welcome to another video for SimonsToStamp.com. Today I'm going to be using this stamp set from Pretty Pink Posh called Birthday Friends. And I'm also going to use this black envelope from Simon to create a really fun birthday mail art envelope. So I'm going to be doing some watercoloring and because I want to use this black envelope, I'm going to go ahead and do my watercoloring on a separate piece of paper. I have some 5x7 watercolor paper from Strathmore here and I'm tracing the size of the envelope onto the watercolor paper and then I've taped it down to a hard board. I'm using some watercolors from Secura Koi today and I'm going to do a really fun rainbow striped background. I'm going to add an additional piece of this blue tape down here at the bottom. I want to have a little bit of space at the bottom to create sort of like a lighter ground or a floor for my scene. And so I want to make sure that I have that area completely clean. And because I'm starting the stripes a little bit up from the bottom, this is also going to give me a reference for a really straight horizontal line. Using a nice red color for this, I'm using colors straight from the palette. I'm not mixing any colors together today. It just makes it a little bit easier. And in order to get the spacing just right, before I do each additional stripe, I put a little vertical line that's the same width as my flat brush. And that just gives me a guide for how much space I need in between each line. And I'm doing the lines, every other line like this, because then it allows the lines to dry before I come in with the next color. This makes sure that the colors don't mix with each other. I want these to be nice, vibrant, solid shades of color, and I didn't want any of the colors to mix. So I'm adding this purple here at the top, and then I'm going to come back and do one more coat on the red just to intensify it. Red was one of the first colors I did, and it wasn't as saturated as the rest of them, so I needed to go back and kind of brighten it up a little. So here's that bottom area. I'm doing a really faint watered down wash of a really light gray. I used the black from the palette and just watered it down a ton. After it was all dry, I removed it from the hardboard and I'm gonna be stamping images from that Pretty Pink Posh stamp set. Now, I'm gonna be using a Misty tool for this. That's why I had to remove it from the hardboard. But if you are going to be using a regular acrylic block, you could leave everything taped there because I am eventually going to tape this piece back to my hardboard so that I can paint the, the images that I've stamped. So I'm using some Versamark ink for this. This is a really great ink for heat embossing. And I'm going to heat emboss these images in a white embossing powder. Now this is watercolor paper, so it has a little bit of texture. So I'm gonna go ahead and stamp these twice. This is just going to give a really solid line. And if there was any gaps because of the texture in the paper, it's gonna give it a little bit more of a, a good chance of having it be a solid line once we're done. I'm gonna remove it from my Misty tool and I'm going to sprinkle on some alabaster embossing powder from Brutus Monroe. This is a nice bright white embossing powder. It's one of my favorite white embossing powders. I'm gonna hit this with the heat tool until everything is smooth and melted. Now when you're, do water, um, when you're embossing, heat embossing on watercolor paper, you have to be really careful. You don't want to heat it too much because it can melt too much and kind of like soak into the watercolor paper. So as soon as you see that that powder is melted, go ahead and move your heat tool away. I added the balloon image because I wanted the little girl holding up those balloons. And then I'll do the same steps by adding that white embossing powder and heating it until it was melted. So like I mentioned before, I did re-tape this down to my hardboard, and I'm coming in with another kind of watered down black color. This time it's a little bit more intense and wanted the gray to be a little bit darker than the gray that I used down below. And I'm just adding in shading on all of these images where it would be if I was going to color it like normal. I just want to have a little bit of shading so that uh, the lines stand out more than just leaving them blank. And I want to give it a really good chance of having it stand out from the rest of these stripes. The stripes are really intense and I wanted them to show through those lined images, but I also wanted to make sure that it wasn't too dark. I added a little bit of red onto her cheeks just to give it a little pop of color, but it doesn't really show much over the orange. I probably could have skipped that part. I'm 
As far as addressing the envelope, which is not an envelope yet, but it will be shortly, I used a white Jelly Roll pen for her name, and I'm using the Jelly Roll size 10, which is the bold pen. And then I moved to a black pen, and I did this because I realized that writing on top of that yellow stripe, there wouldn't be enough contrast. It wouldn't show the actual street address. So I moved to black and decided to do the rest of the address in black. Not only does it appear better on the yellow, but it also makes the rest of the address, which is the most important part, much more legible and more likely to be delivered. Especially the zip code, you want the zip code to be nice and clear. And in this case, it was. I did add a line that says deliver to, just to make sure that it goes to the right place. I then use my paper trimmer. This is the tonic guillotine trimmer. And I trimmed off the right side and the bottom right along those pencil lines that I drew earlier. And I didn't cut off the other corners because I'm going to adhere it and then cut off those corners. So I'm adding adhesive to the edges that I just cut, which is the bottom and the right edge using some Tombow Extreme Adhesive. And then I'm going to come to the envelope and I'm going to add adhesive to the left edge and the top, trying to get it as close to the edge of the envelope as possible. I'm also going to add some stripes of adhesive right through the center, kind of diagonally. This is gonna make sure that it sticks to the center of the envelope. I then took that watercolored piece and I lined up that bottom right corner. This is the area that has the adhesive on the back of the watercolor piece. I took my time lining that up, trying to get it into that corner as close as possible, and then pressed down. I'm gonna press down all over this envelope. I'm gonna turn it over and make sure it gets pressed in really well onto the, back, onto the back of the envelope. I then took some scissors and I just really carefully cut along that edge. You wanna be really extra careful and make sure you don't cut the envelope because that those are folds in the envelope and you don't wanna put any slices or little slivers of cuts into the envelope. I then added my return address on the back flap just using that same Jelly Roll pen. And I really love how this black contrasts with the rest of those beautiful, colorful stripes. As for postage, I used two forever stamps. Currently in the United States, a forever stamp is worth 50 cents. And I wasn't sure if this would go through the machines at the postal uh, offices just right. So I thought I would kind of err on the safe side and add an extra stamp. This also takes into account any extra bulk that I might have because not even having a card inside the envelope, this envelope is pretty thick already with that watercolor paper. So that's the envelope for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. I will be back in another month for another monthly mail art video. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.